Hey everybody, Ryan Jackson, welcome back. Hope you're enjoying the 100 days of the 2026 code changes. So we made it through chapter two and we're into chapter three. And you know, the code takes on a different feel once you go from chapter two to chapter three. Chapter three, I think for a lot of electricians, it's their favorite chapter because this is really the, the nuts and bolts of the NEC, right? This is your conduits, your cables, boxes, enclosures, uh, things like that, the mechanical parts, right? The parts that a lot of us enjoy installing. So. Article 300 is the general requirements for everything in Chapter 3. And it's always been probably my favorite article to teach. I really enjoy spending time in Article 300. So the change here that we're going to talk about is a new section, 300.4. Now, 300.4 has always been in the code, but this actually is a new section. We had to renumber all of 300 so that code nerds like me have to rememorize everything. So let's take a look at what we did here in 300.4. And uh, I think this is probably a good requirement. All right, Article 300, General Requirements for Wiring Methods and Materials. 300.4, Limitations, Damaged Equipment Must Now Be Replaced. Yeah, I mean, maybe it goes without saying, but the code can't just go without saying. Otherwise, look, you, you, it's like my old expression, if you can't cite it, you can't write it as an inspector. If you're going to try to enforce something, it better be in the code, right? You can't just make stuff up. So 300.4c, damaged wiring methods and conductors. Wiring methods and conductors that are not suitable because of physical damage, corrosion, water damage, fire damage, overheating, or similar must be replaced. Now, Again, this is one of those kind of obvious things, but hey, we, we have to have a rule that says this, right? When I was inspecting, if, if, if I had damaged equipment and I said, listen, you gotta, you gotta change this out and they wanted to fight me on it, where could I use in the code book and really point to it and say, listen, this has gotta go. I mean, really, you could get into administrative provisions using the building code and you know dangerous structures and things, but boy, that's, that's a road you'd rather not travel down. It's really nice to just have language in the code that says, listen, if it's damaged, you got to replace it. That includes physical damage, corrosion, water damage, fire damage, overheating, or similar. Now, I do like what it says, though. Wiring methods and conductors that are not suitable. Um, there can be damage that doesn't necessarily warrant removal and replacement, right? If I have a piece of EMT and I, I smack it with something and put a little tiny dent in the conduit, is it damaged? Sure. Does it need to be replaced? Probably not, right? So there is some careful, uh, some careful language in here. And actually where this came from is the argument about reconditioned equipment. You know, reconditioned equipment has been a hot topic for the last nine years. I gotta be honest, I am sick to death of hearing about it. But you know, most equipment has a rule in the code that says you can or you cannot use reconditioned varieties of these equipment. Well, how would you even recondition wiring methods? How do you recondition a cable, right, or a conduit? I, you know, I don't even think it's possible, even if the code said you could. So. In the 2026, we were trying to be very, very clear what can be reconditioned, what can't. Okay, well, how do you deal with this with wire methods? And what we did is we ended up saying, listen, if it's damaged and it's no longer suitable, get rid of it. And sometimes this is clear. I mean, I, I don't think I need any additional guidance determining whether or not that's suitable. Clearly that needs to go. Uh, but sometimes it's not as clear. So there's an informational note here. There's two of them actually. And both of them point to a NEMA guideline, different NEMA guidelines. By the way, go to NEMA.org. Uh, at least they, they're in the process of changing their website. I hope it's still NEMA.org. Get yourself a free account. They do not bombard you with emails. They don't try to sell you stuff, right? But get a free account on NEMA, and you can download their, a lot of their white papers and documents, including this one. NEMA Guideline 1-2019, Evaluating Water Damaged Electrical Equipment. So take a peek at it for information about wiring methods and equipment that may have been damaged by water. All right, so looking at this picture here, we've got a, an indoor uh, plant growing operation. Uh, no, not that kind of plant, just like you know flowers and whatnot. And you can see they used regular old indoor equipment. And eventually that equipment's gonna look like this. 
and eventually it's going to start to look even worse. So at what point does this need to be replaced? You know, somebody's got to make that call. And of course, that's going to be the AHJ ultimately, although hopefully the owner will uh, pull the trigger before the AHJ even gets involved. The other thing that we added is an informational note pointing to NEMA Guideline 2-2021, which is evaluating fire and heat damaged electrical equipment for information about wiring methods and equipment that may have been damaged by heat or fire. So clearly this is going to be replaced, whether you like it or not. I mean, <laughs> you can't use that anymore. Uh, what about the conduit? What about the boxes? Um, maybe there's some guidelines here in the NEMA document. Of course, otherwise get with the manufacturer. Uh, you know, what, what kind of damage does this do to the uh, galvanization of a steel conduit where the zinc is applied to it? I don't know. You'd have to ask the uh, you'd have to ask the manufacturers. So, anyway, some nice guidance there, and more importantly for for AHJs, you finally have some teeth to say, look, this requires it to be removed. Uh, by the way, uh, smoke damage uh, that can get kind of tricky. You know, when it comes to smoke damage on like NM cable, a person has a has an incident in their house where they've got a fire, and the firefighters come in and spray water all over it. You know, if the if the jacket is discolored due to smoke, probably not an issue, right? If it was heated up, and you know, copper obviously conducts heat pretty well, so if it's hot over there, it's gonna travel through the through the cable. So it's always a tough one knowing when you have to replace it. Um, one of the concerns also with NM cable is the water damage that comes from the spray, right? When they're fighting the fire, so that. Uh, paper cover over the equipment grounding conductor can kind of act as a wick <clears throat> and really suck that water right up the cable and as you know it's an indoor rated cable it's not an outdoor cable so anyway there you go 300.4 next video we're going to talk about is 300.6 which is protection from physical damage which is what used to be section 300.4 a couple of code changes there that you won't want to miss so we'll see you then be safe out there